What about a catalyst? What is a catalyst? Catalyst is a substance which speeds up a chemical reaction, but it doesn't itself get changed. How does it speed up the chemical reaction? It lowers the activation energy required for the reaction to occur. What is activation energy? Remember I said that the reactants to react fruitfully must collide with enough force. There must be enough energy in that collision for one reactant to bond with the other reactant and stay together. Now what a catalyst does is it holds the reactants in a way that makes it easier for them to bond with one another. They don't have to hit one another so hard to bond with one another because the catalyst is there to make the connection, help them with a the connection so that they don't have to hit one another so hard. Decreases activation energy. This is the same as what I've just said in a graphical form. So here we have the reactants, they have a certain amount of energy and they have to collide with one another with a certain minimum amount of energy in order to react fruitfully. And once they've done so, well then they decrease their energy by releasing energy in the form of heat, probably if this is an exothermic reaction as shown in the graph. And so the products would then have less energy than what the reactants had and what the intermediate, this is the energy of the intermediate state. But what a catalyst does is it lowers the amount of energy needed for that intermediate state to form, it lowers the activation energy. And so it's easier for the reaction to happen. So we could look at this analogy. It's like without the catalyst, we have a hike where everyone has to go right to the top of the mountain and then pass down on the other side if they want to make the hike. But having a catalyst is like adding another route where you could rather avoid the peak and you could travel along another route which doesn't need so much energy. Now why does this lowering of the activation energy speed up the reaction? To understand that you need to understand this graph. What is this graph showing? Here we have the kinetic energy of the particles. Here we have the fraction of the particles which have that kinetic energy. So here we have little kinetic energy. Not many particles have little kinetic energy in this particular amount of substance that we're speaking about. And then what about a little more kinetic energy? Well, more particles have this amount of energy. And then what about this medium amount of kinetic energy? For this particular substance, which might be container of water at room temperature or some acid at 20 degrees Celsius or some metal at 50 degrees Celsius or whatever you want it to be. At this particular kinetic energy, most of the particles inside that water or acid or whatever you're speaking about have that amount of kinetic energy. That's the most frequent kinetic energy in this particular setup. Higher kinetic energies, yes, there are some particles in this particular substance which have this amount of kinetic energy. But as we get to much higher kinetic energies, well, they're fewer and fewer. Not many particles have this very high kinetic energy and this very, very high kinetic energy few particles have. You see, you must realize that in any substance, say if we have water at 25 degrees Celsius, there is an average kinetic energy which corresponds to 25 degrees Celsius, whatever amount of kinetic energy corresponds to 25 degrees Celsius. And a lot of the particles, a lot of the particles have that. But in any quantity of substance, you will have some particles that have a very high kinetic energy and some which have a very low kinetic energy. Not all of them have that kinetic energy corresponding to 25 degrees Celsius, although the average might be 25 degrees Celsius. In an amount of water at 25 degrees Celsius, there will be a few particles with a very high kinetic energy, so much so that they're able to evaporate. That's why you do get some evaporation at 25 degrees Celsius, but there won't be many of them. Now, what the catalyst does is it lowers the activation energy. What does this mean? Okay, before it lowers the activation energy, let's say that this amount of kinetic energy is the minimum that is required for a fruitful collision to happen. If particles with this amount of energy or more collide, they will stay together in an activation complex which will then split into the products. But there are very few of the particles which have that amount of kinetic energy or higher. Very few, as you can see here. And so the reaction rate won't be so great. But now, 
what the catalyst does is it lowers the activation energy, the amount of kinetic energy now needed for particles to meet with one another fruitfully in order to react is not so great. It's like, in a way, lowering the pass mark. And so now more people can pass. You don't need to do so well in order to pass. You don't, in this case, need so much kinetic energy. The particles don't need so much kinetic energy in order to be able to fruitfully collide. And so a greater proportion can now collide than in the case of not having the catalyst. Examples of uses of catalysts include catalytic converters in vehicle exhausts. And those reduce the amount of nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxide, and unreacted hydrocarbons carbons in car emissions. And how do they do that? They catalyze the conversion of those dangerous gases, pollutant gases, which are also some of them greenhouse gases, into less harmful products. And then another example of use of a catalyst is the iron oxide used in the contact process which makes sulfuric acid. Enzymes are biological catalysts. Enzymes are proteins and their surface has a complementary shape. That means opposite shape to the surface of the reactant. There we have the protein catalyst and there we have the reactant and you can see that their surfaces have complementary shapes to one another and so they can fit into one another and in so doing the reactant is held in place by the catalyst. One of the reactants is held in place by the catalyst and so the other reactant which might be water say can then find that reactant more easily and bond with it and cause the reaction at a greater rate than if that reactant hadn't been held in place by the enzyme, which is a biological catalyst.